restore such a one. You that are spiritual. So the Bible says that if you are spiritual, you're supposed to restore such a one. Now, what is a spiritual person? Who, who's supposed to do this? He that is he or she that's spiritual. Yes. You know, we're in a world now where everybody claims to be spiritual. I'm not Christian. I'm not Muslim. I'm not spiritual. All right, cool, good. But if you're spiritual, do you know what it means to be spiritual? To be spiritual has to do with living like this. The Bible says, or it teaches like this, that if you're spiritual, you are controlled and directed by the Holy Spirit of the living God. To be spiritual means to be controlled and directed by the Holy Spirit of the living God. People who are walking in the Spirit are in the fruit of the Spirit. Those, those people are spiritual. Who are spiritual people? Let, let, me, talk, let me do this like this. Do you remember in 522? The Spirit people have love. There are people who are walking in love. The Spirit people are people who are walking in joy. The Spirit people are people who are walking in peace. The Spirit people are walking in patience. The Spirit people are walking in kindness. The Spirit people are walking in goodness. The Spirit people are walking in faithfulness. The Spirit people are walking in gentleness. And last but not least, the Spirit people are walking in self-control. My God! Now, I wonder sometimes why I said that the end self-control. Because you can be joyous and happy and all that kind of But if you don't have no self-control, if you can't control your own doggone self, then you're going to be a problem and a menace to society. We say these people without self-control, we have to put them away. We lock them in places so that they can't have because they have no self-control. They see your wife, they got their wife next to them, but they see your wife, they want to be all on your wife too. No self-control. Then you, you got your house, you take care of your house, but they want to be in your house telling you how to run your business. No self-control. The Bible says they need to have love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, and some self-control. Somebody need to say, Lord, talk, teach me to control myself. Teach me to control my own mouth, my own thoughts, my own needs, my own life. I need some self-control. I need to have some spiritual discipline. We know what it is to be an undisciplined person. You're undisciplined in your food and your eating. You think you know you're three, four, five hundred pounds. Well, you're undisciplined in your, in your thinking. Next thing you know, you're doing some crazy stuff to some child where you should have been in, in your wife's face or some grown folks' face. But if you're undisciplined in your thinking, and you're undisciplined in your actions, and you're undisciplined in your thoughts, if you're undisciplined in your ethical way, you go up there, you try to do something for the man, and you take, here's five for him and three for me. You're at the table, you work it. Ten for him and seven for me. You steal it and you call yourself a believer. My God. Undisciplined and uncontrolled. The Bible says that we are not lived that way. We are to live disciplined lives. Amen. So you who are spiritual, if you begin to walk in this, then you're going to do this. But what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to do this. It says number five, what precautions, what precautions should you take? What precautions should you take as you're helping that person who's overcome? Now, I need to say this about this. There are some people, like I showed you earlier, uh, quickly, and I'll come back to what precautions. Remember I showed you the guy was running away from sin, and sin overtook him. But there are some folk who are spiritual leaders, spiritual teachers, and all that kind of stuff. Instead of running away from sin, you know what they're doing? They're running to sin. They're trying to get as close to sin as they can possibly be and say that they're saved. They're trying to be, they're trying to be, they're trying to be as, do as much dirt as they can do and, and, and also try to be in the house of God trying to serve the Lord. And this is why, because the more you do that, the more you get to it, you, you won't even be able to stand up as well. The next thing you know, you, you're out of time. You have fallen down on your rear end and trying to figure out how did I get here. You got there because you were just doing in, incremental little things that just let it go. So if you know your brother got a fault, you don't bring your brother's fault. Now, I, 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 I didn't tell you I was a teetotaler. I'm not a teetotaler. That means that I don't, that doesn't mean, it means that I'm not, I'm not the person who never drinks alcohol. But if I have a brother in my house who, if he, if he smells alcohol, he's drunk. If he gets a taker, then that brother cannot hang with me. I can't even, I can't even open up any bottle. I'm hiding everything in the house. I'm not going to bring my brother. Because I know that brother is going through something. So I can help that brother bear his burden. That's right. That's I don't need to be a hindrance to that brother. Yeah. I, I'm not. If I'm a minister and I know that I'm trying to keep my family, I'm not going to take that brother out and hang out with me and let's go run and go. Uh, you, know, you know how the ladies try to do the ministers and stuff like that? Then let's, go have some, let's go have some fun. No, not in this lifetime. Not today. Not when I'm trying to live right. Because I need some help. I need somebody to help me bear my burdens. And so, so I'm not, if, if I'm struggling with homosexuality, I'm not going to take you to the gym where everybody taking off their clothes and stuff like that. And I, so I'm just not going to do it. Because so I'm not going to be a temptation to your problem or your situation. You, I know you're struggling with it, but I'm up there changing my clothes 
funny yet. Yeah. <laughs> you playing with it. Failure. You playing with it. You better watch it. You're going to get yourself burned up in this place. Oh in the name of Jesus. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to help each other bear one another burden. We got to be careful in this thing. We need to take some precautions. And the first precaution that we have to do is this. Instead of running to sin, the first thing we need to do, we need to first look at who? We're going to look at that person and see what kind of sin they caught up in? No. The Bible says this. We need to take care of ourselves. Pay strict attention to yourself. At least you get caught up too. Everybody want to go and point and look at him. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, because they feel comfortable yeah. in their own arrogance, in their own self conceitedness. But that's not true. Here's what it says. Here's one writer says this True self examination is not merely taking one spiritual pause. I'm, I, I prayed today. I fasted today. I, not purely taking your own spiritual pause on a regular basis, but rather submitting one's thoughts. How you think? Your attitudes, how you act, your actions to the will of God and the mind of Christ revealed in the Holy Scriptures. I want to caution you this. Don't get the big head thinking that you got the Christian walk all down pat just because you are you're, because you are not acting out in your flesh. Well. Or you memorize one or two scriptures and you think you got it going on in Jesus' name. Well, you or you, you 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 just don't get conceited, don't get tripped. This is when I had what did I call that message? Don't get it twisted. Yeah. This is the first twist that have people get. Because they get it twisted. They think because they got some title, they've been in the church for some time, they think they got it going on, they know a few scriptures, and they know how to keep you from, from seeing their outward openly sin. But really, on the inside, the Bible is talking about they have been sowing so many seeds to the flesh that they're just a bunch of mess of pulse and, and corruption and pus and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah. All that kind of stuff on the inside of their soul. You scratch the surface of them, you better not get them right. Because they're the first ones to lose their salvation in a moment. You just say one thing out of order, they done cut you to pieces, shredded you like you ain't never been, a, you're, you're not even a child of God. Smith, you gave you a new, a split in your behind. Because they are just counterfeit saints. They just saints that can be seen but have no. They think that they think that because God is an invisible God, He can't see them. They think that they did that, and because He's so long suffering, that He's not going to do anything about it. In fact, they think that His long suffering is a okay to do it. Oh, it's okay for me to do this line because you know God let me God let me do this. You know, for a while now, you know, it's been good. I've been preaching and teaching, and I've been doing all that. It's all good. <laughs> My God, Jesus, help us. But I'm telling you, we're going to see this a little later in part two. We're going to reap what we sow. More than we sow, they than we sow. What is done in the dark will come out to you. Amen. I mean, you know, may not come in your lifetime, but it's coming out. And then you are who are who myself then? So let me make sure I got all of them right. So we gotta be careful about this thing called conceit. Conceit is an attitude that breeds intolerance of the error in others and causes one to think that he is above failure. Oh, you just heard that such and such slept with such and such, and you going around pointing your finger at me. I knew he wasn't nothing anyway. I knew she wasn't. I knew she was nothing but a slut anyway. She said, "You know how we do." My talking God. about people, misusing people, talking about life. and then we could we can see it just because we didn't get caught up this week with that sin. Well. You caught us ten, 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 five years ago, three weeks ago, it would have been you over there. And you, you want somebody to have mercy on you. But you but now you now you got five years of, 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 of virginity, new virginity again. Yeah. Five years of celibacy and you talking about somebody. Yeah. You think you got it going on. Let that right one come and say the right thing and boom, you be down just like the rest of them. We gotta be careful. We got to be careful about how we walk this walk and talk this talk. Because if we're not, we end up on the front page of somebody's newspaper. And we do not want to end up that way. We want to end up in heaven. We want to end up in glory doing the thing that God's called us to do. So what he says, what we need to do is this. We, however we live, we ought to help our fallen brother. How do we help our fallen brother? How do we help our fallen sister? What we do is we bear their burden. We say, I understand. I heard, man. You might want to call them up and say, dude, I heard, man, that John over there fighting up in that house. And I want to be a help to you. And I want to be a blessing. Maybe you can come over to the house. We can talk this thing out. We bear each other burden. You might say, brother, I heard that you're struggling with your finance. Let me show you how to get your financial house in order. Yeah. Since I heard you're struggling with homosexuality, let me show you how I 
overcame that thing. Yes. How about that? How about that? <laughs> How about be truthful? This ain't sure I like it too. <laughs> and here's how I got over in the name of Jesus. <laughs> 